This is Ibrin from the Widescreen Gaming Forum, and welcome to our featured review of the Matrox Triple Head to Go Digital Edition. Widescreen Gaming offers viewers an increased field of vision of 16x10 over traditional 4x3 monitors. Surround Gaming and the Matrox Triple Head to Go take this idea further, offering gamers a field of vision of 16x4. As Patty the Wax said in his original review of the Triple Head to Go, this is widescreen taken to the extreme. The digital edition of the Matrox Triple Head to Go offers several improvements over the original analog version. The first of these is a full digital signal path from your video card to monitors. The lack of a digital signal path was one of the major complaints levied against the original version. Seeing as how the digital triple head to go requires a dual link DVI signal, we now have a better understanding of why an analog signal was used in the original version. The digital triple head to go still offers an analog input option for users without a dual link DVI graphics card. Additionally, the digital triple head to go now gets its power from a USB connection rather than the AC adapter used in the original analog version. Furthermore, the USB connection now allows for user installable firmware upgrades. With the original triple head to go, firmware updates could only be done by Matrox. The ability of the user to perform firmware updates has already paid dividends, with the release of the center monitor as primary firmware update. Previously, users would have been required to RMA their units back to Matrox to receive this type of update. This design improvement offers both a better customer experience and one would guess lower support cost to Matrox. The digital Triple Head to Go ships with the Triple Head to Go unit, a software CD, dual link DVI cable, DVI to RGB cable, and a USB cable. The software CD includes the Matrox Surround Gaming Utility and the Matrox Power Desk. The Surround Gaming Utility, or SGU for short, is used to configure games for the digital Triple Head to Go, and the Matrox Power Desk is used to configure bezel management, among other things. Bezel management is another new feature of the digital edition of the Triple Head to Go. Without bezel management, the on-screen image breaks at the point of the monitor bezel and continues on the other side. This doesn't take into account the space occupied by the monitor bezels. Objects do not line up properly across the bezels, as seen in this image from the Matrox website. With bezel management, columns of pixels are removed from the image frame to account for the space occupied by the bezels. With this feature enabled, objects appear to pass behind the monitor bezels rather than jump across, as seen in this second image from the Matrox website. Installation of the Triple Head to Go was very easy. I simply hooked up all the signal cables and fired up my PC. Upon the first boot, Windows XP recognized a 3840 by 1024 desktop natively, and everything worked fine. From there, I installed the SGU, the Matrox Power Desk, and the firmware update to make the center monitor the primary monitor. Gaming with the Triple Head to Go is an amazing experience. The field of vision is completely immersive, and the name Surround Gaming is certainly a good description. Half-Life 2 and Lord of the Rings Online are two good examples of how surround gaming can best be experienced. Rise and shine, Mr. Freeman. Rise and shine. Not that I wish to imply you have been sleeping on the job. No one is more deserving of a rest, and all the effort in the world would have gone to waste until... Well, let's just say your hour has come again. Welcome. Welcome to City 17. You have chosen, or been chosen, to relocate to one of our finest remaining urban centers. I Recalibrate socio scan. We are receiving data. Who are you thinking about? Dr. Breen again? I was hoping I'd seen the last of him in City 14. Welcome. Welcome to City 17.
sincere, a concerned citizen. Thank you for your concern. Of course, your question touches on one of the basic biological impulses. The all that's associated with hopes and fears for the future of the species. I also detect some unspoken questions. Do our benefactors really know what's best for us? What gives them the right to make this kind of decision for... Surround gaming pushes a lot of pixels and many people wonder if their gaming rig can provide a good playing experience. I've had nothing but good experiences with my rig, which is based on an Intel Core 2 Duo E6700 and an NVIDIA 7950GX2. Running at 3840x1280 on max settings, I average about 90 frames per second in both Guild Wars and Half-Life 2. At the same resolution on high settings, I average about 40 frames per second in Lord of the Rings Online. If you do need to dial back your resolution, like I need to an Overlord, the digital triplet to go handles scaling very nicely. Here are some sample videos shot through my Sony HD V-Cam, showing how the unit handles the native resolution, and comparing that to 3072 by 768, and finally 2400 by 600. While I love surround gaming and find the digital triplet to go to be a great product, everything isn't roses. First off, I have an issue with how the PowerDesk software moves my Windows login and shutdown screen to the leftmost monitor. I figure if I've gone through the trouble to set up this expansive desktop and gaming experience, I want to see it 100% of the time. And shifting my focus from the center display to the leftmost display to log in is a pain. Additionally, the PowerDesk software simply doesn't feel responsive when trying to open it or make any changes. PowerDesk software also caused issues with Guild Wars, and I can't always get the hotkeys for bezel management to work in-game. Also, the digital triplet to go lacks HDCP support. For most folks, their triplet monitors will be their only display, and HD optical drives are soon to be the norm. Even though my graphics card and displays all support HDCP, I'm not able to enjoy either HD DVD or Blu-ray playback. Due to limitations in DirectX 9, the digital triplet to go isn't ready for prime time with 3x widescreen displays. Currently, the max resolution supported by the digital triplet to go is 1366 by 768 on each of three widescreen panels. These small gripes aside, there's nothing like surround gaming. Now that I finally experienced the triple to go in surround gaming, it's now hard to go back to just widescreen gaming. The triple to go digital edition is a solid revision of the original version, and I recommend it to anyone looking to go beyond widescreen and see just what is available in the next gen of display technology.